Way down in Terrytown, there's a special way to get around. It's the only way I've ever found to play above the ground. Zooming along the treetops, <laughs> zipping way up in the sky. Zigging and zagging, forgive me for bragging, but gee how I love to fly. Zooming along the treetop, <laughs> zipping way up in the sky. Zip, zip, zoom, a loom, zig, zag, zig, a zoom, gee how I love to. Zip, zip, zoom, a loom, zig, zag, zig, a zoom, gee how I love to fly. Constant rain finally ended, and the gray skies over Terrytown Valley turned bright blue. JJ was happy as a hummingbird to see the sunshine. He rushed out of the hangar and gazed across the valley. There, looming above the horizon like a gigantic Ferris wheel, was the biggest, brightest, most beautiful rainbow he ever saw. JJ gasped at the magnificent sight. Wow! Old Oscar stopped to admire the view, too. Well, and how, he crowed. It looks almost close enough to touch, doesn't it, Oscar? The little jet said. Sure does, agreed the wise old plane. But the fact is, it's just an image in the sky. It may look close, JJ, but believe me, no one can touch a rainbow. If it looks close, it must be close, JJ thought. I'll bet I can touch it. And he decided to prove it. Although JJ was supposed to be studying his flight plans, he sneaked behind the hangar and took off without anyone noticing. I'll get there and back in plenty of time for my training flight, JJ told himself. They'll never even know I went away. But after 15 minutes of fast flying, he was no closer to the rainbow. Hmm, that's strange, he thought. I should have been there by now. All of a sudden, clouds gathered overhead, and the rainbow began to fade. Then it started to rain again. And moments later, the rain turned to hail. Tiny pellets of ice beat down on the little jet. He had to find some cover right away. Flying low over a hayfield, J.J. spotted an old red barn that looked ideal. With the hail coming down harder, he landed, then scooted for shelter. The barn was a good idea, but there was one problem. It was filled with large bales of hay. Only J.J.'s head and wings fit inside, leaving his rear end exposed to the stinging hailstones. As his eyes adjusted to the dim light inside the barn, J.J. saw that he wasn't the only one seeking shelter. Two farmhands, dressed in identical red plaid shirts and blue overalls, peeked over the hay bales and looked at J.J. in amazement. J.J. thought he was seeing double. With hailstones pelting his behind, the little jet forced a smile and introduced himself. Um, hello, I'm J.J. I'm Harry, one of the farmhands said. I'm Larry, said the other. Then together they said, We're twins! Moments later, almost as suddenly as it started, the hail stopped. Harry and Larry guided J.J. out of the barn. Harry studied the little brown jet and said, Looks like you've got a few dings and scrapes on your rear end. Yeah, a few dings and scrapes, echoed Larry. Nothing a little sanding and fresh paint can't fix, Harry said. J.J. was in a fix. He couldn't go home all banged up. Everyone would know he'd gone flying without permission. Um, anyone around here who can patch me up? Asked J.J. You're looking at him, Harry said proudly. We can fix anything. We'll have you fixed up in no time flat, said Larry. Yep, in no time flat, agreed Harry. 
The tinkering twins wasted no time. To smooth out the nicks and scratches, Harry sanded JJ's tail and rear fuselage. Then Larry applied a fresh coat of paint. Since all the work was being done behind JJ, he couldn't see what was happening. And that was unfortunate, because instead of matching JJ's brown paint, Larry used blue. As JJ took off for home, he had no way of knowing that he was now a two-toned plane. Brown in front, blue in the back. JJ raced for home as fast as he could. As he approached Tarrytown Airport, he believed that his secret outing would remain a secret. He also thought that his paint had been restored to normal by his new pals, Harry and Larry. JJ landed on a secluded field behind the Easy Airlines hangar. Quietly, he approached the hangar from the rear and peeked around the corner. At that instant, Perky shot straight up from the ground right in front of JJ's face. Perky was surprised, but it scared the wits out of JJ. The startled helicopter whirled around like a spinning top, stared at his friend's strange colors and cried, Whoa, JJ, I love the new look, whoa! JJ had no idea what Herky was talking about. Standing at the head of the runway, Easy O'Malley watched as the two-tone plane drew near. A uh, great day for flying, um, isn't it, Mr. O'Malley? <laughs> JJ said with a nervous laugh. The airline owner studied the little jet's silly paint job and asked, uh, Anything you need to tell me about, JJ? Uh, tell you about? <clears throat> uh, no, I can't think of anything in particular, JJ stammered. Just wondering if anything unusual happened lately, Easy O'Malley said. JJ felt he had to say something. Oh, uh, yes, he chirped. I saw a big, beautiful rainbow this morning. JJ, uh, let's change today's routine a little bit, Easy O'Malley said. As a warm up, I want you to fly out to Lightning Bug Lake, then come right back. Sure thing, Mr. O'Malley, JJ said. Then, heaving a sigh of relief, he sped down the runway thinking he had gotten away with his secret rainbow chase. As the two-tone jet sailed over Lightning Bug Lake, he looked down and saw his reflection in the water. Oh, no! J.J. cried. For the first time, he saw that Harry and Larry had used the wrong paint color. J.J. turned and headed for home with a dreadful, sinking feeling in his heart. He knew he should have told the truth. When J.J. landed at Terrytown Airport, he saw Easy O'Malley, Brenda Blue, and Big Jake waiting for him in front of the hangar, and they didn't look very happy. Brenda was holding a paintbrush and a large bucket of blue paint. As he rolled to a stop, Easy O'Malley said, J.J., don't you think you better tell us what really happened today? J.J. wished he had told the truth to begin with. And by the way, Easy O'Malley added, I hope you like that new blue color. We're all out of your regular paint. Late that afternoon, J.J. told Big Jake all about his strange day. I really made a mistake, didn't I? J.J. said with a sigh. Big Jake looked at the little blue jet with understanding. It's never a good idea to take off without telling anyone, J.J. It's dangerous, and we worry when we don't know where you are. I know it was wrong, said J.J., but I feel even worse about not telling the truth. I guess I thought nobody would know. But as you found out today, when you don't tell the truth, it almost always shows, Big Jake said. From now on, said the little jet, my honesty will never be questioned. How's that? Asked Big Jake. Well, one look at me and you can tell right away that I'm true blue. <laughs> <laughs>